Holly here from Beaten Jeans, and we have another exciting interview today. Um, we are interviewing Stacy from Seahorse Snacks. So yes. we'll go ahead and see if she is available and online already. And we just want to say again, thank you so much. We've gotten so much positive feedback from everybody about how much these interviews are helping them, helping them to make their decisions. So to all of you who are um, agreeing to do these interviews and signing up, thank you so much, you guys. You have no idea the impact that you have on this community. So we very much appreciate it. So Seahorse Snacks, and we can't wait to talk to her about her snacks too. She's created this yeah. whole business. Really yummy, yummy, healthy snacks. They look incredible. So we'll just go ahead and wait for her to join us. Okay. And where is Stacy from? Do we know? I don't know. Oh, do we have her? Hello. Hi, <laughs> hey. Hi. Hi, how are you? Good. I'm just going to run upstairs and get settled. How are you guys? Good. 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 We were just at, wondering where, where, where you are. Where are you from? Uh, I live in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Oh, cool. Nice. So, how's the weather in Tennessee right now? Um, it's actually not bad. I think it was like 60. I just yeah. got back an appointment. So, um, oh, that's nice. In the mornings, it's like cold, like the right. grass frosty but um in the afternoon it uh you know warms up so nice well, we're so excited to be speaking with you today thank you so much for joining us yeah thank, thank you <laughs> uh oh oh we have a is little bit of volume issue hold on is that better that's yes. good yeah okay, that's good. we can hear you <laughs> um all right so you have created a uh business it's called seahorse snacks yes and we, we're definitely going to talk about that in the end because your <laughs> your nuts look amazing <laughs> <laughs> but first we want to take it back to just the beginning and we just want to hear about how you discovered your your cancer and or i don't even know if you had cancer but take us back to the beginning <laughs> Yes. How sure. did you discover you are a carrier of the mutation? So my mom had um, stage four uterine cancer in the fall of 2017 mm -hmm. and she was being treated at the Mayo Clinic and they did a genetic panel test to try and find, figure out why she had her cancer. And it turns out that it was unrelated, but she had the CDH1 mutation. Okay. Oh, wow. So, yeah. And she's uh, 72, but she never had any any issues or anything so um we found out about it and then it took me about a year um before i decided to get tested mm -hmm. um, and so i have a my mom's actually a triplet um and so nobody else in our family besides me actually oh. had <laughs> wow. oh my her, two, her sisters or her twins didn't have carry the mutation no isn't that crazy wow now is uterine cancer Great. related to another gene no, no it, like I call it her bonus cancer. Not like that's a good thing or anything. It was just, it was just completely unrelated, but thank God she had it because that's how I found out about my stuff. So, right. Wow. So uh, before your mother's diagnosis, did you, were previous generations struck with cancers or was it just your mother uh, that, you know? I don't think we, re we don't really have a great idea. My grandpa died when he was like 84, I think, but mm -hmm. it was from like congestive heart failure. That's okay. where the branch of the tree that we think it came from. Mm -hmm. um, and his mom passed away when she was like 21. So wow. that, um, I don't know. We don't have a really good definitive history. Um, mm -hmm. One of my aunts does have lobular, lobular breast cancer. She did have that, um, but she's electing not to get tested. So we don't know. Um, on that plane, like how far left or right it goes. Right. Um, but so far, um, my brother, my sister and I tested and I'm the only one that came back positive besides oh. my mom. Oh. So it was crazy. So it took me about a year to decide to do it. And I always felt like um, I'm the underdog. I'm really scrappy. You know, like it's going to be fine. I'll just get the negative and then keep going without my life and I won't have to worry about it, you know. Right. And then, um, 
So it was February 6, 2019, and I got a notification on the app that I had a, a thing. So I clicked on it, and my results were on there, and it said, you are CDH1 positive. Oh, we remember and that I, feeling. That day was not a good day. Yeah. So it was like, but nobody even called me, or nobody even, oh. it was, I literally just found out from pushing on my app, and I was like, how is it possible? Like, oh. how allow this to happen but so it was pretty like traumatic and I remember like as soon as I got my results I was like oh my god am I gonna die like what what's because I remember I was in the room with my mom when she got her results for CDH1 and we didn't know really anything about it and she had right. just was in the middle of stage four uterine cancer treatment so we were like going to chemo every couple weeks and like yeah. you're fighting the good fight with that and it was like it was weird too, because it was like her diagnosis. It wasn't mine. And I was like, yeah, that really sucks. But this isn't my thing, you know? Right. Um, <laughs> and obviously I would do whatever I could to like help her and, and yeah. whatever, but it wasn't mine to bear. So it was just sort of weird, but then finding out that I had it and then finding out on an app and then like scrambling to call the doctor and get an appointment. And I was traveling for work and it was just, uh, I remember my cleaning lady was here that day. And it was like, you're literally having this like mind meltdown. to process it all. Right. I think that's strange. The doctor didn't call you or a genetic counselor or anything. Right. Yeah. So she was like traveling and it was just like a, a system flaw or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, so then I finally, so I went through the genetic counselor at the Mayo Clinic because that's where my mom um, found out her results. So mm -hmm. it was because, I mean, I had literally just moved to Chattanooga. So I don't even have a doctor here. Yeah. I, you know, nothing. So what am I going to do? And then we got all sorted with the Mayo Clinic and they're like, well, how long? Mm -hmm. I was like, how long am I going to be here? They're like, it could be two weeks. We just don't know. So I had to like drop everything and you know, figure it out. So I went there and I had my testing, initial testing done, my endoscopy, my uh, breast thingies and everything was clear. They didn't find anything. So I talked to, um, a surgeon at the Mayo Clinic. And then when I was there, the genetic counselors told me about the study at the NIH. And so I went home, started like processing everything. Um, I set up my appointment at the, and I, I got into the study, set up my appointment. I went there in May and then there was, a, um, met Dr. Davis full team um, and it still wasn't like really sure what I was going to do. Um, there was a, um, a symposium at the University of Chicago in June in mm -hmm. 2019. Um, and that was the first time I actually met other seahorses and oh. other people. And like, it was so weird because it was like so many people and you were like, when you're on the other, like when you're still in the figuring it out stage, you're like looking at all the people and what are they doing? What are they eating? What are right. they like? Yes. And everybody kept saying like, you're, you're going to be fine. Your life is going to be okay. And I was like, I don't, you don't know how great of a life that I have. So I don't believe that you, that you can tell me that I'm going to be okay. Yeah. How can you relate to a stranger at that point, at that point? Right. Yeah. It was crazy. So, um, but at the symposium, Dr. Davis was there. There was a lot of other people there. I met people that I still talk to, um, that were like super supportive and um no stomach for cancer was there i think they put it were one of the main sponsors and it was just super helpful and that sort of like solidified everything for me like this is what i need to do because i don't always want to wonder i don't always want to go from like scan to scan and like did they not find anything did they you know it was just like i figured out this is what i need to do and so then i booked my surgery for uh september 12th of 2019 and then I made a food bucket list. <laughs> <laughs> and and I you had, did you check all the marks? Holy balls. I <laughs> everything. I had lobster rolls for breakfast. Like and we went to um Peter Luger's in New York. Like oh, wow. and everything. It was like it was no one course dinner. There was no snacking at that point in time. It was like, oh <laughs> here we go. We're gonna do this. Cause I kept asking is there anything I need to do? So I was like going to Orange Theory three days a week to like get really healthy and try like I wanted to do everything in my power. Right. To sort of stack the cards in my favor. Um, so I was like getting healthy, but I was also eating. Like by the time it was over, I was like, oh, I'm good. <laughs> like I don't ever want to eat food again, actually. <laughs> so actually the night before my surgery, I asked Dr. Davis, I was like, is there, what are the rules here? He's like, you just have to come back by midnight. I was like, but 
we're going to go eat. He's like, just come back by midnight. So mm -hmm. I was so lucky. Um, we got into a two Michelin star restaurant the night before my surgery and we are going to do like the tasting menu. It's supposed to be like nine courses. They just kept bringing us food. They're like, are you here to celebrate anything? I was like, actually it's my last meal. They're like, what do you mean? I was like, I'm getting my stomach removed tomorrow. They're like, <laughs> You know, because when you tell people, they think you're crazy. But right. then they were like, oh, my God. So literally, the chefs just kept bringing everything out. Like oh, they my gosh. That's amazing. We had 13 courses. Like, oh, it was crazy. Wow. They literally took my stomach out full, which I'm sorry. <laughs> probably disgusting. But you can't say that I did not use that bad. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> now, we heard from someone else that they regretted doing that because they were like, after the surgery, it was so hard to move the food out, like, to you know pass get stool. everything moving again yeah do you feel that way or are you happy the way that you did it i mean i don't have anything else to compare it to so yeah. i mean it took me like five days to poop because you know they don't let you leave the hospital right. until and it was like did you poop yet did you poop yet did you yeah. poop yet? <laughs> I had so many people so concerned about my bowel movement <laughs> um, it's like a big celebration on day five <laughs> <They pooped. laughs> yes yeah um but I mean, I don't have any regrets. It was, How it was fun. Is that, that sounds incredible. That That's is so great. fun. What, what was the name of the restaurant? Uh, it was Rose's Luxury in Washington, D.C. Okay. It's in the market, like Capitol Hill area. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, it was, they were like, they're like, we don't want to ask you to leave, but we need your table. So we'll just bring you drinks. Go sit on the porch. You can stay as long as you like. Oh. I mean, they were amazing it was so cute it was really sweet and then um in the summer i think in july um have you guys heard of the lost kitchen in maine i've um, heard of it yeah no i my postcard got picked the first day and so <gasps> i got uh we got to sit at the bar where they cook my sister and i and that was one of my bucket list items oh, and cool. Karen find um a cookbook for me and i got one for dr davis too oh that's um, so cute awesome it was amazing so that like the whole summer it was like whew, it that was sounds great. incredible <laughs> <laughs> i took it seriously because i'm a total foodie and like i love sharing food and experiences um that's my biggest fear is that i love to eat too it's my whole life revolves around food and what i'm gonna eat next Yes. So how much has it changed for you now that you've had your stomach out? Um, obviously. Oh, well, so my sister turned 40 and I took her to Blue Hill at Stone Barn for her birthday mm -hmm. three months after my surgery. Um, so that's in New York and that's another Michelin star restaurant. Um, Dan Barber, who's a, a pretty amazing chef and he's like sort of the farm to table movement. It was an 18 course dinner and it was oh. like, I ate 16 out of the 18 courses with no stomach. And that was like literally three months out of surgery. Oh my um, gosh. Wow. I ate vegetables for the first time there. I'm like, if I can't eat these and they literally came out of the field next door, there's no hope for raw vegetables. <laughs> right. Yeah. And you were able to do it. You didn't have I, any problems. I mean, at it's little bites and I can't eat everything, but I can still, I mean. You got to taste little everything. Little right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, wow. so it's still like you have to be more selective because you can't. I just can't eat the quantity, but also it's fine. Like most, I mean, every time I mm -hmm. eat, I have leftovers, so I get at least two tries to finish <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> everything. But it, I think it's also more fun because I get to dabble. Like every day, I could have all the proteins all day long. Like okay. literally, I have fish and shrimp and chicken and pork and like it's. I'm all about variety. Um, and so it just sort of forces you. Or um, I know there are some people that find five things that they can eat and it goes really well and they just eat all that. That is not me. Like mm -hmm. that was one of my concerns is like, right. oh my God, I can't just eat the same five things. But, and I think my love of food at the beginning, because um, Rachel, the dietitian with NIH, gives you like a food plan and phase one foods and phase two foods and go knock yourself out phase three. Um, <laughs> At the beginning, it's like, oh, my God, here's this list. And it's just separate things. And so um, because I love to cook and I love food, I was really good about putting them all together. So, like, where's the casserole recipe that I can take all these things and mash them up? And so, right. like, when I came back, I was eating shepherd's pie. I was eating a bunch of soups and stews. And, like, I think literally my life journey sort of prepared me for where I ended up because I just sort of knew – you know, all the things to put together. So I think I got really lucky. 
That's so um, cool. Are you are you married? Nope. No. Single. I have <laughs> you have a dog. <laughs> I just like what, like. Do you cook every night? Uh, no. So I go through like now that it's been two years. So now that I'm sort of like a better at this, um, I do a lot of like cooking ahead of time. So I still love soups and stews because it's a huge way to get proteins. I use bone broth to get mm -hmm. extra protein, and it's a ton of veg. Everything's pretty soft. So. I don't like chewing. I remember the first time I had steak after my surgery, I chewed one bite of steak 80 times before I stopped counting. Oh. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> uh, is this worth it? I don't know, but I have it in yeah. three months, so we're going to try it. <laughs> right. But um, um, I prep and freeze a lot of things because I'm also like really busy. I thought I was busy before and it was really interesting, the timing of all of this. So in September, 2019, I had my surgery. I stopped uh, I was out on FMLA for work and I didn't go back to work until January and then COVID hit in March and then everything shut down again. So I feel like I got to like sort of um, try out quarantine before everybody else did. Yeah. <laughs> so I was really good at staying home, yeah. hanging out and doing all that stuff. Um, but because everything shut down, it gave me the luxury of continuing to work from home. Everybody's working from home. There's nowhere for me to be. I can sort of, you know, figure my life out and try to sort of like get back into everything. Um, it worked in your favor. Yeah, it totally did. Um, and then now this in January, I started a new job and I have to go to work every day. And so I, I was able to like sort of learn how to take care of myself a lot better yeah. before like start doing all that all okay. the time. So wow. Was now did your kind of rewinding a little bit. So mm -hmm. it took you well, three months, you had your big 18 course, 16 course meal. How was so was it, were those three months good for you? How was it coming out of surgery and recovery and everything? It was so scary. So like, uh, not scary, like bad. So surgery went well. I didn't really have any complications. I had a fever and they couldn't figure out why I didn't have any leaks or anything. It was just, I don't know. It was just the thing. Uh, I remember I got back home to Chattanooga and then all I would do was eat, go to sleep. My timer would go off. I'd get up and eat again. And I was like, I don't even understand how I'm going to resume my life because I was so busy. I was gone. I was traveling all the time. Like if I was home long enough to buy groceries, it was an event. And so to like, think, how am I going to get back to this? Mm -hmm. like when literally I eat and go lay on the couch and eat and go lay on the couch. And then it's right. like, was it because you were tired or you didn't feel good? What, what, what was putting you on the couch? I think it's just like your body getting used to the new workings and when you're only eating like so little mm -hmm. and, and it's like sometimes it doesn't sit well or sometimes you just don't feel good or you get full really really fast and so it's like okay I'm done and then try again and I remember walking around the grocery store and I couldn't even make it all the way around like okay we're done I gotta go like I am overwhelmed it's just like a toy I running out of oh, okay. yeah oh. okay oh you crap like was that like your blood sugar crashing or just Sometimes when you eat, I feel like your body processes things faster than others, especially at the beginning, because everything you're sort of tr just trying new things and seeing how it goes. And um, like cheese sticks were my best friend, <laughs> but it's hot down here. So like you can't just carry cheese sticks around. all day. <laughs> Right. Yeah. And a lunch bag. And like <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot to think about. And that was the other thing. It's like overwhelming. Like I can't leave the house. Do I have protein bars? Do I have a protein shake? Do I have water? Do I have dust to put in my water? Do I have like all these things? And it's like, oh, my God. It I've sounds heard... like having a baby, like having your stomach out is like having a baby. And at the right. beginning so overwhelming <laughs> this, you, read, you were the baby yeah <laughs> <laughs> like the, the baby the i don't missing know baby. the missing yeah. <laughs> and it felt like really overwhelming but it's it's like the first time you have to think about this stuff and so it just starts to become second nature and then it's like this is just what i do it's just like getting up and showering and brushing your teeth like it's mm -hmm. you're just on autopilot now but at the yeah. beginning it does feel overwhelming and like going to the grocery store, like, what can I eat? How much sugar does this have in it? What does this have? Like, oh, I want ice cream. Can I have ice cream? What's what's inside the ice cream? Like yeah. I ate Halo Top one day and it has erythritol in it. And it literally sounded like there was a category five hurricane. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
since I had left. It was like, and, then, and my dog looked at me like, what is going on? What is, I've like, heard that tummy rumblings are very loud. Oh yeah. my God. Like, wow. wow. Very can quickly. Can I have normal ice cream? Yes, you can. You I can. can. Culver's is still my friend. <laughs> oh, okay, good, good. Did it take a while to get to that point? Uh, sometimes I feel like you just have to push through, but also there are ways to figure it out. So like if you eat chicken tenders with your ice cream, cause there's protein in there, it helps like the sugar tolerate better. Right. So I found, um, different ways like workarounds. So my birthday is Christmas Eve and I oh. remember the one thing I didn't get to eat before my surgery was Halloween Oreos. And those were like my jam yeah. <laughs> and they didn't come out right before my surgery. Um, and so I didn't get to eat them. And then I remember going to the grocery oh. store. All I would see was Halloween Oreos. Like, Oh my God, I can't. No. And so, but then when you read the things like the label, so going to the grocery store and trying to figure out what you can eat is like overwhelming. Cause you literally are reading all the labels and how much sugar. Now. But then it's like, Oh, this says per serving and there's four cookies in a serving. So yeah. I could probably have a half a cookie and be okay. <laughs> and <Right>. so <laughs> then you start experimenting like, Oh, I had one bite. Okay. This is that like, you sort of test out. <laughs> but then you figure out the serving math and then you're like, Oh, there's three, three, um, Hershey kisses in a serving. <laughs> and, I, yeah, one. and then my, <laughs> I wanted cake so bad for my birthday and somebody made me a cake, which was amazing. And they made a baby cake, but it was still like, I could still be eating that cake. It was too much. So then I found out like the three bite rule. If I have three bites of dessert, I'm like 99.9% .9 of the time. I'm okay. Like mm -hmm. I can have bites safely. Anything more than that, you're flirting with disaster and it depends on what it is, but still like you just sort of like test the waters and figure things out. Yeah. It's I don't like, know if you'd be okay with just three bites. I know. I have a sweet tooth. It'd be like a big tapas party, though, I feel like, every day, right? <laughs> Life is now a tapas party. Yeah. And it's fun, because you get to try all the things. So. Right. so when your pathology came back, did, they, did your stomach show any signs of signet cells or tumors or anything like that? 17 spots. <gasps> oh, wow. Wow. That's a lot. Wow. So stage one. It was immediately validating that I made the right decision. And it's so weird. Like, I remember going to check in on the third floor at the NIH, and they're like, go to the third floor. And you go to the third floor, and you look up at the signs, and it says adult oncology. And I was like, am I in the right place? Because I didn't, I never thought I was sick. I was doing right. that to, like, take care of a thing. But I never associated actual like I never saw myself with cancer mm -hmm. and so checking into adult oncology it was like weird mm -hmm. and then and then to find out you had cancer but it's gone and we don't need to do anything it was like I don't know how to process this this is like so weird but thank god I did this because I don't know if I would have made it to mm -hmm. 42. <laughs> wow. That's really powerful. So yeah Thank because you. everybody tells you you're crazy when you when you're before you do this and you're like this oh, is yeah. what I'm and people don't understand like I remember when I told my dad I was like this is he's like is this real like did you order this test off the internet like <laughs> right yeah <laughs> no <laughs> this is like I know it's crazy but it's real um and yeah. that was a really um leading up to surgery it was a hard time because I felt like I was telling people about this because I I wanted somebody to have an answer or be able to like save me or figure this out for me but there's like literally you just have to make a really tough choice but yeah. and I that I made the right choice and I'm mm -hmm. so thankful you definitely did. that I did but going through it like now that I'm on the other side and I've been sort of like cleared in two years and we're done and I've had four surgeries in less than two years and I do feel like I'm on the other side of this, like turning and looking back to see like everything you're going through, it's sort of overwhelming. Like, cause you don't think about it while you're doing it. You just keep your head down and you keep going. Like this is, I feel like I was solving things and like taking care of things and like, okay, head down, surgery, recover, repeat. Yeah. I feel like that's sort of what it's been for the last two years. But now that it's like when my um, breast surgeon told me, okay, give me a hug. We're done here. I was like, what do you mean? 
Like, I, it took me a minute to, like, process that. Like, I don't understand. She's like, right. Nothing to do. Like, we're done. Wow. And, like, I started bawling. And that was Labor Day of this year. So, Yay! <laughs> Woo! Yes! So, Cancer free! Yeah. So, so you had a mastectomy also. Yeah. So my yeah. stomach was September of 2019. I had a breast lift in September of 2020. My double mastectomy in December or November of 2020. And then I had a hernia repair and then some additional fixing of the, the ladies uh, in July of this year. Okay. So that was, wow. I That's feel like you're like, yeah, I, you mean, I don't have to come back to the hospital anymore. Yeah. Like, yeah, that was not the new hobby I was looking for. Right. You probably feel free now. You it's have just fun stuff on your calendar. It's amazing to like to be able to make plans and to look forward to things and right. outside of working your life around surgeries and recoveries and you know that kind of stuff. So yeah, I feel like I'm in uncharted territory a little bit, but I'm really excited about it. Yeah. <laughs> How was your pathology for your breasts? Um, there. Uh, no cancer. They had like abnormal cells, but they weren't precancerous. So, but I like, I, I'm good. Like once yeah. I had a decision to do that, it was like, this is just what we're doing. And especially cause my aunt has lobular, had lobular breast right. cancer. You don't like, have to worry about that ever. Right. No. It, now. How yeah. wonderful. You know, tricky to find and tr like, yeah. I just don't, I don't want to wait from time to time to time so now we're good it's just wow. so the recovery without a stomach how was that because you don't have the stomach to absorb the um the pain medication was that how was your pain was it tolerable so at first we were concerned and i didn't know like what to do especially like during covid um like the staff is so i didn't have it all at the same place so i had my stomach at the nih and then everything else i did at emory in Atlanta. Um, and so I didn't know if I could take regular pain pills. So I told them I needed like children's stuff. And mm -hmm. so I was taking children's Tylenol and children's Motrin. And um, a lot of the liquids are really sugary because they're free. Right. And so that didn't go so well. So then we had to switch to pills. And the original um, liquid that they gave me, they didn't produce anymore. So my sister had to go to like eight different pharmacies only to find out that they wrote the wrong prescription. And at the beginning, it sucked like figuring it out. Um, all the drinks that they give you in the recovery room are soda. And I can't drink any of that. Like, so I learned, I brought my own snacks for my third surgery. Like I had a snack bag, I had my protein shakes, I had goldfish crackers, I had, you know, all my solid things that I knew I could eat and drink. I brought it all with me. So I didn't have to worry about anything. Um, we figured out pain meds do work. Like I take normal um, Tylenol and Motrin and uh, pretty much all the normal-ish pills that they give you for pain meds. They all work. Well, that's okay. good to know. That is good to know. Um, it's They're like, you had those during, after your surgery and you don't think about it. You don't know. You just take what they give you so okay. it did um my blood pressure now tends to drop low um and so they're like um are you still alive it was like 80 over 50 oh wow <laughs> so they stopped giving me pain meds um but the tylenol and the um you know the whatever oxycodones or whatever they send you home with everything worked fine so it was just like the first time it's weird because it's like your first surgery after and you don't know what's going to happen right. um, it's kind of yeah. yeah it's a pretty big it, surgery it was fine and like it, it was everything like that's good the, to know because i know a lot of people wonder do we get do the stomach first or the breast first mm -hmm. so i guess you can do it either way right i think it depends on your situation so like i'm glad i did the stomach first because i did lose weight and i if i i know some people because implants those don't change size as you change size like your whatever you commit to is sort of like what you have so if you shrink because you lose weight after your stomach your boobs are going to be disproportionate <laughs> and i didn't want to be dolly parton so uh <laughs> i was i know you can fix them and change them out but nobody wants to um no. i don't think voluntarily have more surgeries especially after all of this um but yeah so i'm glad i did it in the order that i did but i know some people don't have that luxury some people yeah. find they have breast cancer right. and you have to tackle that and then 
you learn you have CDH1, so then it's the stomach. So, right. I don't know. So maybe can uh, release some of those fears for people who may have to be doing it that way. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's all going to be okay. And so, why did you choose Emory? Uh, so Dr. Davis referred me. So it's a cancer institute center as well so they're able to take my tissue and send it back to the nih so that they could still um study my mm -hmm. could be a part of the study that i'm in um and i didn't have a doctor here in chattanooga still mm -hmm. I, I finally have one but um i didn't want to get um i didn't i don't know i didn't really know or trust anybody enough here right. to do it here and i wanted just I mean, when you go to the NIH, it really is like the best medical care ever. So everywhere else is going to suck compared mm -hmm. to, and I get as close to really good care uh, as I could. So, so I wanted to ask <laughs> you about, um, like, looking back on your surgeries, what was the most difficult thing for you to to overcome? Was it? Mm. Or like making the decision yes because like... for me it's the decision making but you going to that symposium like that was it for you ne you never looked back after that I feel like that's how I am like once I make up my mind that's the plan there's not really any waffling and I did think about like what happens if they don't find cancer how will I feel about this yeah, like, right. this... who've had that happen it's awful. You know. but it's like if they didn't find it it's still there. They probably just didn't find it. Right. Like it's hard to look at the entire stomach. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I Dr. feel like Davis says we all have the signet cells, right? Yeah. That's, I think that's what he says. Like we just didn't look hard enough. <laughs> They're there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, but I feel like I, there was a lot of like weighing in my mind. Uh, am I going to beat this? But I feel like the statistics and the unknown, I, it wasn't something that I was willing to gamble with. So once I made my decision, it was like, this is just what we're doing. So like figure out the path to how this is going to happen. Um, I think the hardest surgery out of the four was probably my <laughs> hernia repair. Oh, wow. Hmm. Um, be all four, huh? Yeah. Well, so you know how restaurants can't find people to work now? <laughs> And that's how the hospital was when I did this. So it was like right after the 4th of July, it was this summer. And um, it was just, it, it was not an ideal situation. And the recovery was a lot more. The mesh that they had to put in me was really big. Like my hernia was bigger than they thought it was, it was going to be. Um, so I think it was just much more invasive. And we did a lot at one time. So I had a hernia repair. I had my pocket fixed on my right breast. I had a fat transfer and they did oh, okay. one of my nipples. So pretty much from like here all the way to my crotch was affected. Oh. <laughs> and wow. so that's a lot. That, that was, was really lot. big. Yeah. Yeah. So I and feel you like that in Chattanooga. I did it at Emory too okay. with a new surgeon. Um, and then my, um, plastic surgeon for my breasts. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, it was like two surgeons and a robot that we had to coordinate all all the that things was a lot. That, was a big that was just so I didn't have to have two separate surgeries but I feel like it we did do a lot so it felt like we did a lot so. I had that pocket closure that is so painful I, well compared to the rest of the stuff I didn't feel it and like yeah. the, my whole front was numb for a while and then it really wasn't uh then right. like tingling underneath where my the mesh was so I mean, everybody's experience is different. And I think that was one of the things like, um, because we can have complications because there's so many different things that are going on and it depends on your surgical team and how experienced they are and the care team that you have. Like there's so many things that can affect um, your outcomes and stuff. I really didn't want to know like other people's experiences and bad things that went on because I, I didn't have the mental capacity to plan for all those things. And honestly, there's nothing you can do about it. You just have to deal with it at the time. So I just try to make sure I did everything I could to deal with whatever was going to happen at the time. So mm -hmm. there's um, this app called Health Journeys, and they do like pre-surgical meditation thing. So every night before I went to bed, I would listen to it. And it's like, I am going to have a successful surgery. My doctors are very knowledgeable, but oh. it, 
studies do yeah. show that that has like positive outcomes with patients and stuff. Right. And it's like a little thing you can do to like help. And so after, before every surgery, I would do that. Like the week leading up to surgery, I would just listen to it as you're health following journey, health journeys. Oh, um, that's Thank you. so cool. That reminds me of like, if you talk to a house plant, you say bad words to it and it like shrivels <laughs> up. But if you talk positive to it, it, it blossoms. So it's sort of, I mean, the mind is so powerful and it has such a, such a big impact on everything. That's so cool. So I was super protective of my mind and the things that I would let in and the people around me. Like I didn't, if people were like, you're crazy. I like next, I'm not spending time. Right. It's like, I was very conscientious of like, just trying to feed myself and not like positive, positive, right. positivity, just like real, like mm -hmm. you got this, we can do this. I, you made it through a hundred percent of the things that you have been through so far. You have a really good track record. So I got two tattoos in July before my surgery. So one of them is on my wrist. I wanted it to be visual so that I could see. And it's like three little birds from Bob Marley's three little birds. Mm -hmm that I've made it through everything that I've been through so far and then the second one is on my right middle finger um, because usually when things piss me off it pops up and <laughs> it, it, I love it. it's facing me so that I see it and it says find the gift because I believe that there's a gift in every situation but it's not always easy to find like there is something to learn or something to take out of everything that happens um, and so it was it's to remind me to find the gift in whatever Whatever made this pop up. <laughs> I love it. You have the greatest attitude. With humor. Yeah. 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 So, I, like, I just tried to stack the deck in my favor and do everything that I knew possible to try and, like, to be successful. And it worked for you. Yeah. Look at how successful. Right. Great. I'm sure. <laughs> and you started your own business. Tell us about your seahorse snacks. Yeah. So when I went for my one year checkup last year to the NIH, um, there's a, a market in Capitol Hill at Eastern Market. And my cousin and I were walking around and um, this lady was selling nuts. So I bought these nuts and I was like, oh, my God, these are so good. I ate a pound of nuts by myself in three days. That wow. is for a person. That is a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so then I came home and I was like, why can't I do this? And so okay. I literally like, what am I going to call it? Something with a seahorse, right? So um, seahorse snacks. And I Googled it. Nobody had it. Like, and then, so it just like started. So I started working on the recipe from like October until January, February. And then I was like, it just, things just started coming together. So this is like my way of sharing my love of food and my story with the world. So they're snacks that I can eat. They're portable. They have protein. They don't have a lot of sugar. Like they're seahorse sanctioned snacks. Um, and because we eat all the time, I like to variety. Like I don't want to eat the same thing over and over, but I love these things. Like I not get them online, online. <laughs> pecans and cashews and almonds. Yeah, I want to order some. So what's the website? Can we do it's that? Seahorse snacks.com. Okay. Um, and then I'm seahorse underscore snacks on Insta and seahorse snacks on Facebook. Cool. Um, and yeah, so like this, they I start chips worldwide, uh, not globally yet because there's like things that I, you have to figure out, but I sell at markets. I have my website in October. I moved into a commercial kitchen and I got department of agriculture certification. So now I can sell at retail. So Amazing. once I'm through holiday, hopefully they will be in a store. Yeah, um, great. Great. <laughs> How fantastic. So I have big plans for my little nut empire. Um, yes. after, um, Christmas, I'm going to start working on new flavors. So I have two flavors right now. My first one's called Chili Tumrific, and it comes mm -hmm. on almond, cashews, and pistachios. And then my second flavor is called Maple Chitastic, and that comes on pecans. So it's a sweet flavor. Um, so, yeah, we'll see. Yay. what happens. I'm definitely going to go order some right now. <laughs> that sounds amazing. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. So. Oh, well, Stacey, you've been so fun to talk to. Like, yeah. you're, you're, your spirit is just contagious, yes. like your happiness. So thank, thank you so you. much for sharing your entire journey with us. And do you have anything else that you want to share with us or share to the people that are going to listen to this interview? Um, 
like those people weren't lying like you're you really are going to be okay like things it's it's hard to really wrap your mind around that but I truly believe that my life is better now than it was before in a lot of different ways. Um, and I, I am so much more appreciative of just life now and good things. And it's easy to distinguish like what's important now and what's not. And things are different, but they're better. So like a new outlook on life. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, you fought really hard to save your own life. So you get to make it whatever you want it to be. Right. And it's pretty amazing to to be able to realize that. And I feel like most of us are pretty young. And to have that realization, you know, before you're 80 years old and you can actually do something with it is a pretty special opportunity. So yeah. Yeah. anybody ever has a questions or wants to talk about anything, I will gladly, uh, you know, discuss like making lemons out of uh lemonade out of lemons you did it <laughs> with with a couple shots of vodka yeah. <laughs> can you still drink oh my god yes so, <laughs> Good. okay the first new year's i went to vegas and it was like okay i'm gonna figure this out so that's where i had steak but then also champagne was my jam before this so um i worked very hard to be able to tolerate champagne because the bubbles are I remember when I first had it, you can feel it burning a ring around your tube. Like, oh, right. it's not nice. But you just have to, like, keep working, keep working, yeah. keep working. And we're good now. <laughs> good. Okay, okay, good. <laughs> so good there, there's a way to figure everything out. Like, there is a workaround, and you'll you be able to teach your body how to, how to handle it, right? Tell it, no, you're yeah. doing this in your head. <laughs> you, can, you can drink the champagne. <laughs> It's just like little at a time and then if it doesn't work you just wait a couple months and try again so and and there's so many different things that you can do like um I was like I used to drink like vodka and cranberry or stuff with like a lot of juice but now I figured out martinis are delicious and there's a bajillion martini recipes yes there's a lot of alcohol in them but they go down so much easier than trying to drink water I don't know what wow. the this but you know because the water the surface tension it is weird it hurts sometimes um so but martinis man they're <laughs> we'll have to practice on those <laughs> <laughs> they're for everything the, well the... you are truly an inspiration for those of us that have not gone through with the surgery surgery yet so i appreciate all of your insight and sharing all your secrets with us and tips and definitely we're going to get some of your nuts <laughs> and we just appreciate you and we hope you have a fabulous birthday on yes christmas happy Eve birthday happy and early really birthday. Merry christmas. 44 i can't tell you how excited i am about it like legitimately excited for a whole new meeting this now so it's great Birthdays are extra special now, I'm sure. Huh? For sure. Everything is. Like, yeah. celebrate everything. Yeah. yeah. Good. Awesome. It's fun. Well, thank you so much, Stacey. You're yes, awesome. We appreciate we you. you. <laughs> but hopefully, I'll see you guys soon. Yes, yes for sure. Absolutely. We appreciate you. <laughs> Take care. Bye. Bye. Thanks, everybody.